Hello family, we bless the name of the Lord for today. Today, the kind of prayer I'm going to be talking about is the prayer of confession, which I'm sure all of us are very aware of. It's probably something we do from time to time. And so I believe that this might just come as a reminder um, that it's important that from time to time we confess our sins to God. The first passage of scripture I want to look at is in Matthew chapter 6, verse 12. This says, and forgive us our debts as we have forgiven our debtors, letting go of both the wrong and the resentment. This is a verse that is part of the Lord's Prayer, which again, I'm sure anyone who is already a Christian knows quite well, where we're told that one thing that we need to pray about or to confess is that God should forgive us our sins. But it's interesting to note that God's forgiveness of our sins is dependent on whether we ourselves have forgiven other people of the wrong they've done us. And the Amplified goes to explain further that it's not just the wrong they've done towards us, but also the resentment. 1 John 1 9 says, If we freely admit that we have sinned and confess our sins, he is faithful and just, true to his own nature and promises, and will forgive our sins and cleanse us continually from all unrighteousness, our wrongdoing, everything not in conformity with his will and purpose. This is a passage of scripture that I think is so reassuring that God knows that even when we have confessed our sins, the sin that we were all born in because we know Adam and Eve sinned and as a result of that, our nature is a sinful nature. So when we come to accept Christ as Lord and Savior, we're accepting his free gifts of salvation that enables us to be reunited to God because sin caused there to be a separation between mankind and God. But through Jesus Christ, that restoration is restored when we accept his free gift of salvation. So for anyone who has believed in the Lord or believes in the Lord as Savior, you would have prayed a prayer confessing that you were a sinner, you need, have need of a Savior, you do not want to incur the wrath of God, for we know that the Bible tells us that the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus. So we would have prayed that prayer before confessing or asking Jesus to come into our lives. But from time to time, we sin. And the Bible tells us so many different things that can constitute a, um, a sin. So when we have lust, for example, when we have pride, when we're greedy, when we're envious, when we're jealous, all those different things are sin. But I think that I also want to quickly look at some category. Sometimes sin is categorized and I just want to quickly um, pinpoint one or a couple of those categories of sin, just so that whenever we come to pray to God, we'll be mindful because again, we're told that in prayer, we need to be specific. And I believe that even when we're confessing our sins, particularly those sins that we know we have done, it is important that we're specific in mentioning those sins and asking God to particularly forgive us of those sins. There is a type of sin called a sin of commission, which is the sin that came about as a result of Adam and Eve. In other words, we're born in sin. Our nature is a sinful nature. Then there is also what is described as a sin of omission, which is when we know the right thing to do, but we fail to do it. There is another type of sin that is sometimes described as a mortal sin. And those things include sexual sins, murder, stealing, violence, and all of those things. And as usual, there is a passage of scripture where a prayer of confession is made. 
and I think that many of us may be familiar with it already, but I would want to go through that prayer just because, again, we find in that passage of scripture that the person that was praying this prayer, a psalm of David, I don't know whether it means that David was the one who prayed that prayer. I think it is believed that he was the one who prayed that prayer. Pardon me, but I'm no theologian. Um, but you find once again, just as he prayed to the prayer of thanksgiving, he wasn't very quick in asking for forgiveness. He was very specific in certain things that he said. So we're going to quickly look at the entire Psalm 51. And this is what it says. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your loving kindness, according to the greatness of your compassion. Blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from my wickedness and guilt and cleanse me from my sin. For I am conscious of my transgressions and I acknowledge them. My sin is always before me. Against you, you only, have I sinned and done that which is evil in your sight so that you are justified when you speak your sentence and faultless in your judgment. I was brought forth in a state of wickedness. In sin, my mother conceived me, and from my beginning, I too was sinful. Behold, you desire truth in the innermost being, and in the hidden part of my heart, you will make me know wisdom. Purify me with hyssop, and I will be clean. Wash me, and I will be whiter than snow. Make me hear joy and gladness and be satisfied. Let the bones which you have broken rejoice. Hide your face from my sins and blot out all my iniquities, creating me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right and steadfast spirit within me. Do not cast me away from your presence, and do not take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation, and sustain me with a willing spirit. Then I will teach transgressors your way, and sinners shall be converted and return to you. Rescue me from blood guiltiness, O God, the God of my salvation. Then my tongue will sing joyfully of your righteousness and your justice. O Lord, open my lips, that my mouth may declare your praise. For you do not delight in sacrifice, or else I would give it. You are not pleased with bent offering. My only sacrifice acceptable to God is a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart, broken with sorrow for sin, thoroughly penitent, such, O oh God, you will not despise. By your favour, do good to Zion. May you rebuild the walls of Jerusalem. Then you will delight in the sacrifices of righteousness, in bent offering and whole bent offering. Then young bulls will be offered on your altar. So we find here, he acknowledges the fact that he was born in sin. He acknowledges the fact that he, from time to time, doesn't get it all right, though he knows what the right thing to do is. And it is because of that that he's able to come before God, recognizing that he comes before God, knowing full well that God hates the sin, but loves the sinner. And so he comes before God and he says to God, because of your loving kindness, you're a just God. You're great. And he goes on to, you know, adore God. But in doing so, he also recognizes the fact that when he has sinned and he's done that which is wrong, he needs to be truthful about it. So he goes on to say that, God, I know you love truth in the innermost being. And so though he had sinned, he was not ashamed to declare or to say that which he had done, knowing that this same God who says to you and I, that when we confess our sins, he is faithful and he is just to forgive us and to cleanse us. David had a relationship with God. And it's interesting that Jesus was the one who came on the face of this earth and told his disciples that he was going to go to heaven. And when he goes to heaven, he would send the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit would come on this earth to help us. Jesus hadn't been born at the time that this passage was written. But David knew the Holy Spirit. 
And so in his prayer, he says, God, do not take your Holy Spirit from me. And it goes to show that God, when we have an intimate relationship with him, when we're seeking him with all of our strength, with all of our might, when we're seeking to love him the way he tells us to love him, even that which is not common knowledge to anybody, he would reveal the deep and hidden secrets to us. And it is that which made David know that God gives the Holy Spirit. And he acknowledged that the Holy Spirit was with him. And so he prayed to God and said to God, do not take the Holy Spirit from me. And so today, as I share this, many of us have been told, uh, we practice this where we're told that before we pray, or ask anything of God, we need to confess our sins. And so sometimes we do our confession when we have set aside time to pray. But I also want to submit to you that there are times when you do not have to wait till you're in your prayer closet to ask God for forgiveness. Because in our walk with God, it is a relationship. And as it's a relationship, there are times when God will prompt you to ask him to forgive you of a sin that you may not have even done today. Maybe it's a sin you committed many years ago. Maybe at the time you didn't even realize it was sinful. Or maybe it's something that you've kind of put in the back burner, kind of thinking to yourself, well, I don't recall it. So if I don't recall it, it's okay, I can carry on. But God knows that sin can hinder our prayer life. Sin can keep him from hearing our prayer. Sometimes the miracles and the things we're trusting him for Certain unconfessed sins basically hinder him from doing that which he wants us to do. So there are times when because of your close relationship with God, he might prompt you to ask for forgiveness for a particular thing that you did. And I just want to encourage you that whenever you get that prompting, it doesn't matter where you are. In that moment, it is because God knows something that you don't know. And he definitely wants to do something that will be a blessing. So even if you're driving... Even if you're in a public place, even if you're in the midst of work, doing something that under normal circumstances you might think is mundane. But once that thing comes to mind, ask God to forgive you. Find a way. Mumble words out of your mouth and ask him to forgive you. Sometimes when you ask God for forgiveness, maybe because you did something to somebody, he might forgive you, but he might also lay it on your heart to maybe do some other things, perhaps try to reconcile with somebody, perhaps try to go back to that person and ask that person specifically to forgive you for something you did to them. Anything God asks you to do, it is important that you do so. Because I remember a testimony of somebody that um, apparently was having, having some spiritual battles in his life. There was an ongoing issue and he knew that it was, it, it was only the power of God that could bring him deliverance. So he went and saw a man of God who, because of his um, history, or maybe, not, I probably shouldn't say history, his track record, people knew or know him to be somebody who when he prays, God speaks to him. And when he says that, that saith God, you know that basically whatever it is that is holding you bound, you will be released from it because of his prayer. A righteous man whose prayer avails much. So he had gone to see this person, shares what his problem is. The pastor prays for him. And then God reveals something that this guy, person had done many years ago when he was a teacher. And he says to the person, God says he will take care of it. He will give you what you need to do. However, you need to restitute. You need to go back and see certain people that you did certain things to. And what that pastor was pretty much saying was that, even though God had heard physically, this man had to do something to restitute in order for his deliverance to be complete. So whatever God asks you to do, please do it because he is a God who forgives our sins and wants to restore that which maybe the enemy would have stolen from us because of our sin. We're going to go over our memory verse in John 15 verse 7. If you remain in me and my words remain in you, that is, if we are vitally united and my message lives in your heart, ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you. We're personalizing it by saying, if I remain in Christ and his words remain in me, I will ask whatever I wish and it will be done for me. The Lord bless you.